Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in here at the first championship with Team 5895, Eddie Robotics. Coming out of the FMA district, they won two district events, and they were finalists at their district championship. Incredible robot. They can do it all. From Coral with a great hopper, really awesome climb. We're going to dive into this on Behind the Bumpers. Here with us, we have James, Rayhan, Albert, Jaden, Casey. Let's find out so much more here on Fun. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. All right, James, why don't you start us off with the end effector? How does your robot deal with coral so effectively? Okay, so one of our key design constraints when we first started was that we wanted to keep our end effector at one angle as we score in all the levels. So to do that, we basically prototyped a bunch of different designs and in each one we wanted to see how well, how consistently it scored without having to pivot uh, out onto the reef. And so for this, we have actually a hard stop on the back of the end effector. So whenever we're scoring on the reef, we just push the end effector back and we score like that. And that minimizes any inaccuracies and it keeps everything simple and we found that it works pretty well for coral. Um, another thing with coral is that we wanted to have a pass through straight from the human player intake. So when the coral comes in, we wanted to very quickly just come in here and stow it and not have any other complications. And so, yeah, that's, that's something that we designed um, with and it's been very successful. So yeah. I see you can also handle algae here on the top here on Effector. Can yes. you tell me a little bit about that? How did you guys find that design? So as we went through the season, we realized that the reef was getting filled and algae became more and more important. So before we sort of had a, a different algae mechanism, um, we didn't really pinch the algae. We just held it um, with a small amount of compression. But we decided to do this pinching mechanism because it really allows us to sweep across the ground and capture the algae with a really fast floor intake. And it also allows us to pivot out a little bit onto the reef to grab the algae. And then when we go up, we don't need to go into the super max extension of the elevator. We can still have a good amount of overlap and we can score in the barge because this algae mechanism is up pretty high on our end effector. It's on top of the coral mechanism. Yeah. Very cool iteration, James. I appreciate it. Now passing it over to Rayhan, let's talk about this elevator. It's very large. How do you guys design this elevator and works really well for you guys? Yeah. So this year we immediately knew that we wanted some kind of fast linear actuating mechanism. So the, the best choice was an elevator. Our particular elevator is one of those uh, typical high tide elevators that exploded recently, typically this year. So our design has is a two stage belt driven continuous elevator. We have uh, this nice fiberglass belt and this one right here. Uh, it's driven on um, 3D printed pulleys with needle bearings inside, so it's a nice fluid rotation. When it goes up and down, it's very nice and smooth. Um, our gearbox is at the bottom. It's a 5.25 to 1 ratio, and it's driven on two 24 tooth pulleys. The, the, the big benefit of these pulleys is that it allows for a lot of grip on the belt, so it, that prevents a lot of skipping that a lot of elevators will have. Another pro, pro of the continuous elevator is that it's very compact and with a huge weight limit. This year, having a nice compact robot is very, very helpful. Uh, if you want to see it in action, uh, do we want to go to our L4 stages? So this is our, our highest stage. This is what we typically s s score our, our L4 in. Can you go to barge? This is how we score our barge. Our end effector also supplements this by being extra high. And we can also uh, pick up algae from the floor. All in all, the belt-driven elevator ends up being robust, fast, and efficient while minimizing the, the footprint of the mechanism. Very cool, Rayhan, and thank you for the demo there. Very insightful. We're going to pass it over now to Albert to talk a little bit more about the hopper and the climber. Really worked well for your team this season. Pretty consistent climb. Let's talk more about that. Yes, so early on in the season, we decided that we wanted a um, passive intake, both because of the weight 
and also because of oh, and also because we found that it worked very well. So for this particular intake, we went through about 13 iterations to get to this. So for this geometry, you can see that we have this flat edge at the front. This is to prevent the core from bouncing out of the intake when it comes in, because we, we noticed that if this, is, this extends out at a pretty steep angle, sometimes when we intake a coral and we are trying to pull away, the coral can bounce out pretty easily. So we have this to prevent that. And we also have uh, the bottom of this intake slanted towards the middle. So it helps direct the coral straight as much as possible. And we also have this middle section, which helps uh, redirect it even more. And this intake is made of ma max composite, mostly to save weight, but also because it's very rigid. And you can notice there are tape over here. These are low friction tapes. Th these are to make um, the intake extra slippery to make sure that the coral can go in as smooth as possible. And another part of the intake is that the how it's mounted to the robot. So you can see here we have two carbon fiber tubes over here. The back carbon fiber tube acts as a pivot and the front acts as a support. So you'll notice here are a linear actuator and one on the other side as well. So at the end of the match, when we go to climb, we will retract these two linear actuators and this um, surgical tubing will pull the intake back through the elevator while this end effector is um, pivoted forward so that we can have this entire front section of the robot that we can leave to the climb. Speaking of the climb, we have this climber um, inspired by Team 3255 Super Nerds from California. So you'll notice that we have this foot at the front and a latch at the bottom. So during the end game, we um, release this latch and it'll all pivot forward because of the spring. And this um, foot will be latched onto this two hooks over here so that it's um, fixed at the bottom. And this will, um, th this circle will be held at the center hole at the bottom of the cage to make sure that the cage doesn't move up or down. And after we um, latch into the cage, we have the back mechanism, the latch pull back through a Dyneema. We have one Kraken with a 25 to one, I mean 50 to one planetary gearbox um, to pull the cage back so that the cage is as much as possible in our robot and is almost horizontal at the end, which gives us a very convincing climb. We are pretty high off the ground and we can stay there for at least 10, more, 10 plus seconds to make sure that we can um, still be in the air even after the match ends. Very solid engineering there, Albert. Thank you for the explanation. Now to wrap it up with Jaden, can you tell us a little bit more about the software that Patty uses on this robot? Obviously you have an incredible mechanical robot, but you have to enable that with software. So what is your team doing to really perform at the highest level? Cool, so we start on the back side of the robot. Um, uh, to start with the HP intake, so there's a camera here. Uh, this will look at the HP tag that is right above the loading, player, the loading station. Uh, this is an alignment element that's the same as the reef, which I'll go over later. And then next we have this other camera here, and this is going to have an open field of view right in front of the back, in front of the climber, once the uh, the intake has been uh, pivoted away. So what we've done is uh, we've scoured YouTube for videos of cages, and we've labeled about 3,000 pictures of them to run a cage detection model with. And after that, we trained the cage detection model and put it on here. Uh, which this limelight is a limelight 3 connected to a Google Coral. So we use this to run uh, cage detection in the end game. So that makes the, uh, the climb automated and we can shift left or right to uh, just track the cage basically. And that allows us to latch onto, very quick, latch onto, latch onto the cage very quickly. Uh, here at the front of the robot, we've got two limelight 3Gs. They are exactly 6.5 inches away from the center of the robot. Uh, that's exactly the distance between the poles. So that means that when we're right in front of one pole, one of these cameras will be right in front of the April tag. And what that lets, lets us do is to just make sure one of these limelights see the tag the entire way. Uh, so the alignment algorithm we run on here is we will first use trigonometry to calculate this robot's desired pose where we can score on the, on, on the L2, L3, and L4. And after we do that, we can simply close a, we can simply run a pit loop on the arrow between the robot's current position and the desired position. And we found that using the uh, MegaTag 2 measurements from each of these cameras works extremely reliably. Uh, we just need to supply it with a very accurate gyro angle, which you have from the Pigeon 2. And then we've also done some stuff uh, where we can renormalize the um, errors into the lateral and depth components relative to the tag or relative to the side of the reef. 
Um, so that allows us to tune two separate pit controllers for lateral adjustment and um, depth adjustment. So that allows us to align the reef extremely quickly. Um, and what we found earlier this season is we don't really want to occupy the driver's mind with um, choosing which side of the reef we align to. So we have an algorithm to use the robot's gyro, the robot's current position, and the robot's current movement to figure out where the driver is trying to get to. Um, that uses um, all of those things and use the gyro to check whether we're in the correct place. So we use this algorithm uh, on the HP station aligned as well. So it really works on everything. It's extremely fast. After we get it to pit tune well, it can be you know many times faster and more reliable than a driver. Um, but based on the design of the robot, if we want to be able to keep this thing against the hard stop to score on the L4, that means that this has to be extremely accurate relative to the L4. But as we know, there's some variance in terms of the poles. It's always plus or minus one and a half inches. So Casey can tell us about um, how we make sure we minimize that error. Yeah, so um, basically since our robot works well with like um, with the pole height being consistent, we had to make a lookup table for all the pole heights. So like during field calibration, we'll measure each one. And based off that, we'll compare it to our lab measurements and then we'll categorize it into seven categories. Oh yeah, and this is what we use to measure it. It's like a laser measurement tool, but we'll stick it onto the top of the pole and then it'll read off. Um, the height, but basically we have seven categories. We'll have like uh, extremely low, low, slightly low, normal, slightly high, high, and extremely high. And uh, like I said before, we'll compare it to our lab measurements and then just categorize each pull. Um, so it just makes our scoring more accurate based off of that. So after we characterize them in, in, into the poles, when we align into the uh, scoring position, we will look at what category the pole is and we'll add a small adjust adjustment to the can coder rotation on the elevator. And that'll get us just exactly where we want it to be. Well, Patty, that adaptability is just really key to your success and it's pretty awesome to see. I have to ask, what is a Jor Mungander? <laughs> so our robot name is Jor Mungander. There we it's, go. <laughs> yeah, it's actually um, from the Norse mythology. So in our team, we have a tradition that every year our robot's name has to go in alphabetical order. So this year, because it's our 10th year, we have our robot name starting with J. And we like to use some more complicated names to our robot to make it more fun, especially for the people announcing them. Um, so this year we decided on Jormungandr. And also another thing that we want from our name is that we want this to be something that can fly. So because our um, mascot from our school is a falcon, so we want every single um, name to be something that can fly. So here it's a serpent from um, the Norse mythology that lives in the water, but it can also fly in the air. So this is why we chose this name for the robot. It <laughs> yes, it can fly into the sea. Well, Albert and the rest of Petty Robotics, thank you so much for the explanation there. Congrats on your 10th anniversary. Uh, and thank you for taking the time to talk with us today on Behind the Bumpers. Thank you all for watching. My name is James for the Fun Robotics Network, signing off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.